What's in a name? Well, when the name was Macedonia, the result was a quarter of a century of dispute in the Balkans. Now as North Macedonia, the small country in the southeast of Europe, has much better relations with its neighbours. I've been sitting down with the president to discuss this and other issues affecting his nation. I'm John Brain and this is TRT World One on One. Few countries have had such an issue with their name. Tell me why it has been such a source of controversy. Uh, to make the long story short, it's possible to speak about that at length and for days and days. In essence, that was the competition between two different historical narratives. One on the part of the Hellenic Republic of Greece, as it is known widely, and the other is on the part of my country today, North Macedonia, or between two people, Greek people and Macedonians. And for maybe 20, 25 years, we have been negotiating with, with our southern neighbor, Greece, about that issue. We have two UN resolutions from 1983, so, pressing us to, to find a solution on the issue. And the Greek side has always said that there's only one Macedonia. That is within the current borders of the Greek state. We said, no, no, we are at least located in the northern part of that geographic region of Macedonia. And you know, whenever speaking about the name of the country, yes, you are always, but always speaking about the identity of the people living on that, on that, in, on that space. So the name of the country, in essence, is bearing the main feature of our ethnicity, of our ethnic identity. So on the other side as well, with a different set of arguments, of course. And that was a set com competition of two historical narratives. At the end, we find a compromise five years back with the so-called PRESPA agreement. And after the name where that agreement was signed by the high representatives from both countries. And from that period on, we are north. We have, add, we have added a geographic qualifier to the name of Macedonia. So we stayed Macedonia, but make? it was extremely difficult compromise to be made because the people, the common people, wouldn't like to accept anything of that. You know, we have done that in order to enter NATO alliance and start negotiations with the European Union. Then since our independence in 1991, two strategic goals we would like to achieve, regardless who is in the government and all political parties, that was the must. And have you felt, or felt the advantages yet of being part of these organizations or at least it's extremely getting important. on the journey. It, it, it's extremely it's important to be the part of this organization. Then uh, there are historical examples of, for example, of Switzerland or a few others who have not been for the whole period of the existence member of this organization and survived, but that was in a different historical context. Where we for sure we will not be the state today recognized, widely recognized, internationally recognized within the borders we are in if we have not been the members early on in the early 1990s, member of the, of the United Nations. Secondly, extremely important to us, since 2020, we are the full-fledged member of the NATO alliance. Being in the, in the heartland of, of the Balkan Peninsula, known throughout history for a lot of wars, conflicts, destruction, immense suffering of the people, and uh, being with only 1.8 million people living in North Macedonia today, that uh, is was very important to have behind our back or to be together with the organization where are the most powerful economies, the most mightiest armies and the biggest countries in the world. So today we have 30 plus friends and supporters if necessary. So you're in NATO properly. How frustrating is it waiting for full EU membership? Unfortunately, the, the same obstacle, uh, we met the same obstacle when trying to approach the European Union. And we thought at that time, we have the nationwide referendum in 2018, and we thought at that time that we finally resolved that obstacle, because it's the same obstacle in essence, towards, going towards the European Union. Unfortunately, some of our other neighbors, in this particular case, the Republic of Bulgaria, imposed on us, or asked from us, demanded from us, a few other preconditions, uh, which has, in reality, nothing to do with the real, truly European criteria for membership in that organization, they asked from us to change our national historic narrative and to accept theirs. You know, whenever speaking about history in each corner of the world, about history, it's very difficult to find the common ground between the neighboring countries. And that is mission impossible whenever speaking about that topic on the Balkans. So we have rejected that 
and we got an understanding from the rest of the membership in the European Union. So today we have only one precondition to continue with that accession talks with the European Union, that is to put the small Bulgarian minority living in the country, three and a half thousand people, to put them in the, into the preamble of our constitution. But it was deeply frustrating for our people because we have been waiting in the anteroom of the European Union for 17 years. This is the timeline. We have got the candidate status for, the, for membership in the EU 2005 and last year finally we started with the first the so-called intergovernmental conference and I can I can tell you that because of all of these obstacles are very unusual never been imposed to anybody else before us the euro enthusiasm is going down very steeply in my country we have been in the high 80s even in the high 90s and when I was asking the people are you in favor of the membership of your country in the EU and for example, 92% or 91% of, the, of them will say yes, of course. Today, we are barely above the majority of the people saying the same, which is making the job of the politicians very difficult. Feel you're too weighed down by your history to go forward. Are, are you stuck? Unfortunately, you know, that was an old uh, saying, uh, known saying that in the Balkan, even I think two, two and a half centuries ago, or, People like Bismarck said something like that, that in, in, the, in the Balkans that is uh, the producing too much history that, that can absorb. Unfortunately, still at, not everywhere, but when it comes to the good neighbor relations, then uh, our neighbors in the Balkans are not always good one. And in my view, we should deal in the 21st century with the real criteria for the European membership. These are the rule of law, independence of the media, professional administration by merit, and so and so forth. Uh, human rights, of course, and freedoms of the people. Not to speak about, uh, I don't know, history of 19th century, 10th century, 15th century, about the Middle Age, uh, ages. And unfortunately, that's still the time. And we are early on, I would say, in our transition from communist or socialist systems we have been for, for half a century towards real or mature democracies and we have still a long way to go and not me i'm not speaking only about my country but speaking about the whole of the region we are still far away in, in crucial areas from the european average so to say when i was speaking about the indicators of democracy uh, you talk about the, the tensions with some neighbors are, are, is macedonia north macedonia doing enough to resolve those tensions or are you just blaming we, the other side from w what i already have said uh, you have concluded by yourself that we have done much more than anybody was, was, was ready to imagine at the time when disputes had appeared on the surface. Can you imagine that we have been so ready to compromise that we have added a geographic qualifier to the name of the country, which has never been done in the history of modern diplomacy by any other country in the world. So tell me any other example. There have been countries in recent history even who have changed their name I'm hearing now that India might change the name of that country, but that is voluntarily being pressed, being preconditioned in order to enter these, for us, very important international organizations, to, cha to change the name by adding something to the name, our real name of Macedonia, the core name Macedonia. That was without precedent ever. So we have done a lot. You sound very frustrated. Is, is there anything you can is. do to... Get above, uh, In my view, this. our European friends should, should, should uh, better understand our arguments and our positions. It's not possible to push the people to the margins of that political debate. As I said, we are ready to discuss 24 by 7 about real criteria one day to be a real European democracy or mature democracy. But certainly we are not ready to, 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 to say we are not interested in our identity, you can refer to me or name me whatever you want. That's simply the red line we wouldn't like to cross. As an individual, as the president of the country, as a human being, I have my identity. I wouldn't like that identity to be rejected or to be disputed by anybody else in the world. So certainly, if you ask me, what is the priority in your life? The priority is my name, my identity, the well-being of my family, and even after that membership here and there. Now, you're here at the UN. You've got the world's leaders around you. Is there anything uh, they can do? Have you, what, what's your call to the UN? 
Uh, I'm still waiting to deliver my speech for the Security Council this afternoon. And uh, two days from now, I should deliver the speech at the, the UN General Assembly. And we are always saying to the well-minded people and the nations who would like to be helpful in this regard, let's stick to what was enshrined in the chapter of the United Nations. This organization has not been done just out of no reason and just to be there to, or because that was fashionable. The, the main cause to maintain peace, stability and security throughout the planet, throughout the globe, should not be forgotten. And um, part of my speech, a uh, good part of my speech will be dedicated to the, to the ongoing Russian invasion in Ukraine and we would like to see something like that. We have been through very, very deep hardships in our recent history. We know quite well what it is to be to be occupied or to be pressed by the bigger neighbors. So we are giving everything we have to the Ukrainians because they are fighting for the right cause, fighting for that, they're dying for their country. And not only as a member of NATO, I'm not speaking about the formal obligations to help Ukrainians to defend their country against the Russian occupiers. It's important for me, for everybody else in my country as humans to help other humans to fight for, for the environment in which they can say, yes, we are what we are and no one else from the outside can occupy my country, my land and say that I am not what I claim that I am. And if everything goes to plan, if you get into the EU, if uh, North Macedonia uh, prospers, what's your vision for the role of your country in the future? Uh, you know, before <laughs> becoming the president, I have been teaching international politics for almost two decades. And I know quite well that for the small countries, there are no huge role in, research in world politics, in the international order. They are more followers than creators of policies on the global scale. So, but being in the organizations we are in now and uh, tomorrow in the European Union, of course, being the member of the, of the world organization, so we would like to make a small but valuable contribution to the common cause. Speaking about the climate changes, we, are, we certainly do not have resources to tackle that alone. Right? If the United States of America, China, wherever else in the world cannot tackle that alone, it's obvious that all the world challenges of today and of tomorrow, of course, can be tackled or we can manage them, we can resolve or at least mitigate the, the negative effects they are producing only together, only through togetherness, not going one by one. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you for invitation. Thank you.